what he said. First, yeah. let's show what he said. Okay. And then we come to the discussions with Stephen Atubiga. This is what Kwesi uh, um, uh, Ahoy said, for which he had apologized. But this is what he said. I was not prepared to be president at that time. But nature, nature skewed things in such a way that President Mills had to give way to John Mahama. Anything can happen. So, Nana, be ever prepared, like your motto says. Be ready. Anything can happen. And you can become the president of the Republic of Ghana. Yeah, Nana. So... prepared to be president at that time but nature nature skewed things in such a way that president Mills had to give way to john mahama anything can happen so nana be ever prepared like your motto says be ready anything can happen and you can become the president of the republic of Ghana. yeah nana, so Constitution uh, says that um, the president, when he is away or is incapable, his position will be taken by the vice president. Christian Ahoy supporter said that's the point he was emphasizing. What's wrong with that? Um, it's rather unfortunate that an astute politician like Kwesi he's my very good friend. I remember when um, my big brother John Dramani Mahama took over um, after the death of uh, um, um, Professor, um, former President Tamils. He had to build his own, his own empire. When they relieved him as an interior cabinet minister, taking him to South Africa, we met. He said, Steve, your brother has demoted me from a cabinet minister to, uh, to go and work under Hannah Tete, who was then the foreign affairs minister, to go to an ambassador in South, in South Africa. Africa. He said, Steve, I've been demoted because he felt I was a threat for his presidency. You know, when immediately... Oh, oh but these uh, are... You, you are just quoting Kwesi Ahoy? Yes, yes. He we, told you that? Yeah, one-on-one -on -one we spoke. But he, he may deny it. Yeah. If, if he doesn't remember, he denies it. No, that. he will not deny I mean, he knows He that. told you that... Yes, he, he were taking away. President word, Mahama feels that he, Kwesi yes, Ahoy, is yes, a threat? Yes, And not, not don't forget that... Yes, he, we, we, we talked about... He wasn't... Govle Lati was removed because they felt he was so powerful that he could determine... You know, when John Dramani Mahama took over... He had to build his own structure, his own empire. Which is correct. There's which no, is, uh, which uh, is strategically, I think, I, I wouldn't correct. blame him. Yeah. Because if you look at, um, some of us are involved deep. That's why I want to make an explanation. It is the Hoyes, I will, I, will, I will summarize. It's the Hoyes that discovered Atamils and brought him to Jerry. So when Jerry finished his term of office, his last term, Atamils was supposed to, you the NDC, they make sure you continue, I mean, your vice, your enemy takes over. He said he wasn't feeling good. He didn't want to take over. He was persuaded that he should go one term, and after the one term, our mother, who had, uh, Nana Kunedu, who had paid her dues very well, was supposed to take over. Remember, 31st December, he has, she has done so much. So, Atamil was to do one term. One term. Then Mrs. Rollins would do the next term. Next term. And, you know, the Ahoy's brought him. So, mm -hmm. Atamil was loyal to the Ahoy's than Jerry. That was the beginning of the problems between. So, after his first term, you know, power is sweet. And the Ahoy's present, um, a Tamil style, he made sure that Ahoy's were so powerful. He gave certain powers to certain blocks when he was a president that you don't need to come to me at Tamils. If and told his ministers or people that matter. If they gave a note or when they spoke that do it, it was done. I mean, that's how they became. So when, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, John Dramani Mahama took over. He had to build his own. And you know, that was the time that the momentum in the NDC was so he would, uh, some of us activists were, uh, uh, were approached that uh, uh, Kwesi and Harun Edrisu ticket was brewing so hard. Even at the time, at time uh, at last days, when he wasn't feeling well, that was, it was brewing. And unfortunately, it didn't materialize. So, and that was also the beginning of the, sh uh, I wouldn't say the shadow fall, at the beginning of President feeling threatened by uh, Harun Edrisu. You know, it was, I'm telling you the fact that was what was... Others were even asked to demonstrate for Atamils to resign and maybe at uh, uh, Hawaii and uh, Akwesi and Harun Edrisu ticket. Then, as a president, if I'm John Ramanim, I could have done, I would have done the same thing. He made sure he started, the, uh, uh, what's his name, 
the man he tornado mm -hmm. then go were taken outside the country if you fair he built his own team and then he he won okay and that was how he was able to secure his then so that hoist during the tenure of john draman and mohammed's of in office that hoist were sidelined they were they didn't play any role they didn't play so all of them i wish it means god bless you so was alive too you know it, they, they were said the party had to go for position our our wasn't happy with the direction there was betrayal he felt betrayed that a Tamils had betrayed him, the Hoyts had betrayed the agreement, whatever they had going on. So they also pulled back, and that is how John, part of it contributed to John losing, John Dramani Mahama, former president. After he lost, then he built his own team. They came and bargained. So the statement that he made about the, the um, unless he can tell us, he knows the health, the current health of our former president that we don't know. But it's one of the statements that that is very unfortunate that he has exposed John Dramani Muhammad. Look, if you are lucky and they make you a leader of a party, you have a party, you are still ruling. It's just that you are not ruling a nation, but you are leading a political party that you want to lead people to go and win power. So your action and inaction, your, the, the, the braveness and the independence of choosing your running mate counts a lot, shows how brave you are. The statement that my brother, my good friend, Awai made, if it's anywhere, the woman should have resigned. It shows that it no, was... No, she, but when she, she got the opportunity to speak, Jenna Nopokwajima is reported to have said the opposite, that President Mahama will win and she, he will finish his term. Yes. She said that. But in politics, everybody, especially in our NDC, anybody who is a card-bearing uh, anybody who is a card-bearing member who pays dues, you are a stakeholder in the party. Mm -hmm. So the, it's not like the... But you are not a member of the NDC anymore. I, I'm not a stakeholder. So what is your matter? I'm not a sympathizer of them. I, 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 was, I rose from a foot soldier. I'm a grassroots person to the extent that I wanted to lead the party that paid my dues to the party, sacrificed for that. I, I have resigned from the party. NLC's mother party is NDC. It is members of the NDC that will broke away. So what are the points you are making about Christian The Christi point Ahoy. I'm trying to make is that the statement that Ahoy, my big brother Ahoy has made, he has exposed John Dramani Mahama weakness. It means he did not choose. It was, I call it political uh, 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 ransom that he, he chose Nana because he had to choose the Nana because uh, they reconciled that side of that. If Ahoy did not support John Dramani Mahama, there was no way he could have nailed, I mean, he could have made the number of votes that he made leading the NDC, both 2019. And then I'm talking about the primaries. The primaries. You think that Ahoy supported it's John not Mahama? That I think. That was, that, they they that did was, because they, they wanted Jay Nana to be the running mate. Yeah, and that was their, that was their begging because Akwesi doesn't want to be a president again. I mean, at that time, he said he wasn't interested in being a president again. So you have to protect your interests. Every block from, from the... Uh, Bagbe has his block. Uh, 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 Harun Idrisu. Harun Idrisu has his block. Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Oh, Johnson, I said, don't get here. They all have their block, and then the formal banker, the formal uh, 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 Dufo has his block. Mm -hmm. uh, look, when I was, I was a member of the presidential reconciliation team mm -hmm. and the NDC. It's our committee was so powerful that, that you could withdraw a minister, you could withdraw uh, any candidate. Our can, our committee that withdrew uh, Zita, Zita's hus husband. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, myself. Mm -hmm. How is he doing, by the way? Yeah, he's doing. Harun Edusu, I'm sorry. Alaji Dusu Mama was a chairman for Sina Nelson, Bidzadin, uh, Kufia Toda Nabidakwe. I was, myself and Bidzadin were those taking, you know, writing the, 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 the minutes. I mean, I'm talking about taking notes. The reason why I'm saying that there are certain statements when you make as the party as NDC, I think that when I mean it's exposed to John Ramani Mahama, mm -hmm. Now it has, it has come, uh, now there's division. Everybody is going in for their stake. So if you have imposed this woman on John Ramani Mahama yeah. as your surrogate or as your, uh, uh, somebody that will look out for you. In that case, God forbid, whatever they know that we don't know, whatever they, they might have known about John Ramani's Mahama's health or whether... But it looks like the NDC have overcome the state. Say, yeah, it looks like the NDC oh, have overcome. This, no, if you know what politicians, we are very wicked. We don't know, for, our forgiveness is through the lips. We say, oh, German, okay, I'm trying to make a point that the, right now, all those who contested the NDC presidential seat uh, rejected the woman from day one, have rejected it again. So it shows that she has jumped the line. So it shows where do they stand? And God forbid, if what my brother Ahoy said, because as a human being, anything can happen, God forbid. Then what happens? It means 
the woman is not going to do one term or uh, uh, with John Ramani Muhammad. She they may also push her to continue just as Atamil's did. So that is the fear in the formal. Uh, is that is it causing problem is NDC from what you know, even though you are not a it member? It has it has it has um, um, it has deepened the uh, cracks. The cracks. So MPP should and, be happy about it. Oh, MPP. Look in politics, your opponents. Uh, uh, false or your opponent mistakes is what you run with it. Unfortunately, that is how the game is. Your opponent six, you flip it to nine. We can pretend, you know. In policy, you take advantage of your the weaknesses of of, of your opponents, and then you, you 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 change it. That is why in NDC we shared we shared laptops, right? Mm -hmm. NDC we shared a lot of laptops. Mm -hmm. So when when I had my my big brother John Ramani Mahama made a statement that uh, uh, President Anado is sharing the. The, the, the laptop for politi political gain. I mean, I heard it in the news. So, I, on my way from the North Coast, I said, hey, so I think that he's a former president and he's, he's, he's an astute politician who has done so much that I think to me, the, or the NLC stand is we don't criticize or we, we share ideas, we praise where due. It's, it's, I think he should have rather you would have scored more money. There was a point about saying that laptops are being given for political that, gains. That, that, so, so, no, the, that, that, that so political gains, so the laptops will not work? Or thank, thank you. If so, you serve its purpose and so, it's for political gain, yes, why not? I was thinking mm -hmm. my big brother should have said, that, oh, at my, in my tenure as a president, I gave her the laptops. And the laptops were so good that there were people in schools, especially I can use the northern sector, that have never held a laptop, have never seen it physically, besides, you know, have never touched a laptop. They use stones rocks as keyboards perhaps president Mahama was saying I, I that the laptops will not translate to votes maybe Good. that's what he was saying no he was saying he said it straight up that it was like in a form of trying to use it to buy votes or to to, to entice people to vote and i think that he should have rather praised that look i did it and this is the advantages of it that it helped the nation and and it helped students it made the deaf privilege to also have access to computers he should have praised the the current government and said look i will do better his a former president should not be saying, should not be criticizing because your, your faults, your actions and inaction, your, your weakness, you should be saying that I will do this. I will change that. Are you getting me? I'll do this better because you're a former sitting president. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bahamia has never been a president. He's yet to be a president. And then if you have a, and you have a running mate who is bold enough like Dr. Mahmoud Bahamia, who is able to look at the face of the masses and disassociates himself or to or to say, I will change this direction that my, my, my boss made us to take. I will write this narrative different. I will change the I will cancel the e levy. I will, I, will, I will do certain things that he has promised. That he will do it. So when a man speaks But the question like, then is why is he not doing it now? He cannot do it. He's a mate. The post, he they never voted for him. He was he was chosen. So this will be his turn. Okay, let's it? let's move and on the, to the religious matter. Moving on. When um, I heard Alan Chiramante mm -hmm. making the statement of Muslim this I was so sad. He didn't say anything about Muslims. He said this country is uh, Christians are the majority, and then he thinks that a, 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 a Christian should rather be leading this country. Yes. And it's unfortunate that you have an astute politician like uh, my my my. Let's, let's hear what Alan Chiramante said, and yes. then we'll come to you. Let's let's hear what he said. This is what uh, uh, our brother Alan Chiramante said. As a predominantly Christian nation. As Christians, it is our responsibility to ensure that we elect a Christian leader who is also a Christ like leader. Amen. And I want to use this platform in particular to commend highly the Church of Pentecost for the role they've played in education in health in the economy and also in winning souls for christ amen let me just ask when you so at the church of pentecost i say what you may do so far what you have a problem with you know a fan by boom a fan of my boy who know sad you know this year when you know me born about so can see without doubt the pentecost church is the largest denomination in ghana with your numbers, you can determine who becomes leader in December 2024. So, you have to make the right choice. 
If you go down on your knees and the good Lord points to Alan John Kojo Tramatin as the leader. Amen. So Koko to join him. Now Bompa and Nanya make a show say, Yeah, honorable Alan Kojo Tramatin. Then please don't harden your heart. And then Naman says, Amen, Prim Wakoma. Alan Chamatin is reported to have spoken to him. Uh, we have been looking at his, uh, um, uh, Mr. Chamatin's uh, talk critically to determine whether there is religious bigotry in it or not. And we were trying to assess it. We have not yet come to a conclusion. When he speaks to Christians and says that uh, we are Christians and so you should vote for a Christian, that's kind of okay. But when he says Ghanaians are Christians so don't vote for a non-Christian, I think that's bigotry. And uh, Peace Council and the NCC perhaps should be interested in that. We don't want a campaign of either religious, tribal, uh, gender, any kind of bigotry. You remember in England, Theresa May became Prime Minister because another woman who was running for uh, the Prime Minister position, who was really uh, ahead of Theresa May in the polls, had commented about Theresa May and said that she didn't have children. And, and that, that uh, uh, incensed the British people. And they voted massively for the Conservative Party, for Theresa May, to be Prime Minister. This is religious bigotry. I think that the supporters of Alan Chamati should tell him, let's run a campaign. You cannot come and say, Ghanaians are Christians, so we vote for Christian. Nigeria is majority Muslim. They voted for Chief Basanjo, one of their best presidents ever. He's Christian. So let's not do that. People are born into a religion. They don't choose it themselves all the time. Some people may grow and choose, change action to central, charismatic to that, Catholic to charismatic. Yes, that's there. But people are born into. Why are we punishing somebody because of the circumstances of his birth? That's very dangerous. That is very, very dangerous. I'm not doing an editorial yet. I two big guys speaking. But we need to draw this point. We cannot punish people because he's born Muslim, because he's born Christian, because he's born Northerner, because he's born Ashanti. That's dangerous. And any politician who says that, we should put him to shame. What do you mean by Ghanaians are Christians, so let's vote for a Christian? Tell us why we should vote for you, and we will listen. But you don't come and tell us, don't vote for this person. Not that he's not competent. Not that he's, whatever, corrupt. But because he's Muslim. That's dangerous. In 2024, Alan Chamatin actually said that. I have a lot of respect for Alan Chamatin, but this one is so is misspoken. Everybody who knows Alan, tell him that he can't run. If he continues like that, we are going to, he will have to deal with all of us. If he continues this kind of bigotry, he should be apologizing. His campaign should be apologizing and explaining. How do you say something like that? Somebody is born Muslim, so he cannot be president ever at all. Zero. Why? He cannot be, what, member of parliament? He cannot be minister because he's born Muslim. No. There are rules that run presidency. He must be qualified to be a citizen of Ghana. America is predominantly uh, Christian. Barack Hussein Obama was elected president of America because he's competent. Barack Hussein Obama was elected the president of the United States of America. That happened. That's a progressive society. That's a progressive world. Where is Alan Chamartin taking us? That is backward talking. That Ghanaians are Christians so we shouldn't vote for a, a Muslim? That is very, very backward. And I expect other presidential candidates to condemn the conversation. It's very, very bad. And we are keeping an eye on that space. Alan Chamati will speak again. We'll see whether when he gets the opportunity next time, he's going to withdraw that religious bigotry. That's what it is. Bigotry. Go on. Yes, my brother. I was expecting that the leadership of the church, the institution where he made such unfortunate statements, um, they should have issued a statement and disassociated themselves or to condemn it. Because I say most of the Christian, they, are, they have Muslims family. And this country was built, was built, I'm not saying without no fear, without no apology, this country was built or has been built with Muslims and other religious bodies together. We are a country that we don't see religious colors. We are a country that we believe that people have the right to worship whichever religion and Political leaders are not being voted or political positions are not given to people based on their religious background or Ghanaians do not go to the ballot box. But I think that Alan Chiramantin's statement is very, very unfortunate. It's unacceptable. And, and this country, he forgot that it was a Muslim, Alit Muhammad Aliu, who, uh, went, who partnered with Kufu 
and they won power the year i think the year 2000 right yes correct. and then through that he got the opportunity to be uh, the minister for i uh, know i'm sorry uh, um, ambassador and ambassador later minister to, for trade uh, yes for trade and all that and then today you've met somebody like boniface mm -hmm. who is who was one of i mean if i if i will not lie if they are picking pre, uh, vice presidential aspirants or vice president if if not what where he found himself he would have been number one or number two he was supposed to be a running mate to Kofu. he didn't was supposed to be a running mate even to our i mean he was champion people were leading to for him to be a running mate mm -hmm. okay for uh, uh president anado i'm talking about boniface and then you've made such a person with other muslim bodies to withdraw from a party or to lose their membership to follow you and you make such statement it's a slap in bunny face and cool's face and i think that any muslim following uh alan chiramantin today uh, i've spoken to some of them they are so disturbed they feel betrayed and how can you even face chief imam how can you even go to the uh, muslim communities and go and campaign and if you are lucky and they and you will make you a leader of a political party and here's the case that you have you are building your own movement it means you built your own nation you, are, you now want to you build your own empire then you make such a low blow statement you're an astute politician like like alan i think that i will i will apologize on his behalf um you know as because i'm, I'm also i'm one of him that we all own a political we own a political party in this country i will do the honor by apologizing on his behalf and i think that whatever reason if you are given the opportunity or want to leave this country what he has said Look, today, Muslims are now more enlightened with, with your indulgence, mm -hmm. if not before. You'd have seen demonstrations. You'd have seen attacks. You'd have seen a whole going after him like the way they w went after Usu uh, 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 church. They would have gone, even made statement that he should never step foot in Zongo again. A Muslim has the right to lead this country if the Ghanaians, if the people of Ghana decides who should lead this country. And as a matter of fact, Muslims have been very loyal. They are the most loyal people, okay, in the history of politics muslims deliver and any muslim that has been given they are very clean they are very truthful and the muslim people muslim is the only religion that if they commit a sin the next minute they apologize because they pray five times a day <laughs> okay okay they are very honest they are straightforward people and i think that it's only Ghanaians that can decide who should lead this country and if he's referring to dr mahmoud Baumia, his polit his political party that he has resigned just as I've resigned from NDC. Mm -hmm. The man didn't just pick the, the, the running mate slot and then the presidential candidate slot on a silver platter. No. Okay. He campaigned yes. and he was elected. Yes. And the opportunity that Alan Tramantin got under President, Anna, President uh, Kufu, eh, it was like giving a child a, 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 a baby with a babe, with Milo. Then he has gotten it so much that he's, he's now complaining that the babe that you put on me. <laughs> it's not the best that's what happened to alain Tramante. you got the opportunity that all all government uh, uh, apparatus was was with you and you couldn't make it and when you lost you left all those boys who are legends to uh, nanado who are, i'm talking about the the young young guys that you knew who were with alan and co and you left them and somebody groomed them anytime you lose an election you are nowhere to be found you, you surface back when you want to contest that's not how you lead now you should you are a founding member that your signature is on the party irrespective of whatever unless you don't want to play a role now you've gone to be a surrogate of the ndc okay they will mass people for you you are now imitating what fifi Kote talks about no muslim can be president so that's what people forget if you drink a long move at certain kiosks and you are privileged to be sitting at a five-star hotel drinking the same you forgot that you are drinking johnny walker no kapatashi that's where how uh, my brother alan has found himself he has for and if you are not lucky to have a wife that when you put your shoulder on will tell you that my husband no, that's getting personal no no I'm, I'm saying that if you are not lucky as a person but you can't talk about his wife I, no i'm not talking about i'm i'm speaking the truth and the facts mm -hmm. every politician mm -hmm. irrespective as a president at the end of the day you and your wife you lock each other in the room and certain mistakes that you make if you have two wives which one do you look well you have that's why you have first ladies and you, you give them shadows. Senegal has two first ladies now. Uh, look, thank you. And he's a Christian. Senegal. The president is a Christian. I don't believe that. He's a Christian. Paul Bello for me to he's come and answer this question. He's a Christian. The, 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 and it took nine days after when he came out of He's a Christian and he has Christian. two wives. Yes. And no, Christian, there's nothing but you can have as many wives as you as, as Okay, you. let's get, my, get my back to our is, matter. My father is a Catholic. So, he has five wives. 
The father is Catholic. Like, yes, my yeah, father is Five said. wives. Yes, yes. My, my, I mean, Muslim, you go he to He must them. be a very strong man. Yes, yes. I mean, my, people have having two, three, four. Tonight, hours. we'll be talking about the 12-year-old and the, the Ulo. But anyway, let's finish okay. this. We have a so, lot to do. Senegal, Muslim country. Mm -hmm. Everything of them is Muslim, but a Christian one. So what does that tell my brother? My brother, uh, 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 Can you ask Bello whether it's true that the guy is Christian? That's all I need to do. Yes, he said it's not true. Uh, okay. That is not. He's a Christian. He said he's a Muslim. Anyway, go on. Anyway, we we, we will verify that. I mm -hmm. know he's uh, he he. he Fire. That's his name. Fire. Yeah. Came out of from prison. Yes, he did. And, and, and but anyway, let's let's and, wrap and, up. And in this country, Alan should also know better that it is three political parties that merged. Dan Kwabuzia Dombo. Okay. Fifty years they produced a Muslim candidate. What does that tell him? His former party or his he has made history. And what does that also tell tell him that in the first time history of this country, a Nordner who we don't see political colors, we don't see a, a, a religious religious colors, we see him as a Nordner. We see John Dramani Mama as a Nordner. We see uh, 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 Hassan Ayaraga as a Nordner. That he has been given the opportunity to, to lead his political party. It is not an individual, and without without any fear. It's not a particular religious body that would decide who should lead us as Ghanaians. We are way bigger than that. And this can also plunge the country into chaos. It can. The statement that he has made is very... And I think that the Peace Council... The, 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 look, anything that is national security, the national security have the right to invite Alan to apologize. Especially we in... in, in, in it's in, very dangerous. Yes, yes. Very, I mean, and, if he goes to a Muslim and, and, community and, and, and starts throwing stones at him... Where do you do it? That's, that's you have a security problem. problem. All, your, all your... Even the Muslim... His supporters. Now, I'm saying that even... Not even... The Muslims in the, the, Muslims in the yellow party. The follow in the yellow mm. party. Mm. Who, who, they are all in danger. So I think that it is unfair... It is. Let's let's do this game. What right. does Boniface Sidik think about this? Boniface Sidik must have yes. been there when he spoke. Thank you. And Boniface Sidik yes. is okay. And the former, that somebody says that a Muslim should never leave and, Ghana. And, and, and the former member of parliament, what's his name? Uh, 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 the former member of parliament, um, who was the communication director for the MPP. Oh, Yabwabi. Yabwabi and Co. Yeah. These are people that are way up there. Uh, Alan has dropped them. Alan should cool down. He should cool down. This statement is terrible. I'm not yes. healing too. Yes, this so shows, a very senior see, person shows, who works with Allah. The pain that he has towards the MPP, his political party, and then when you are peeved, that was why I was trying to make a statement. What is that, the point? There's an election that he lost. That is why I'm trying to make a point that any leader, whether Samson Goria, the best soldier, Dampari, president, and anybody, at the end of the day, you have a wife. You have a, so you, we take advice from them. They look at, they are able to tell her, look, my husband. Are you also suggesting that if someone doesn't have a wife, he shouldn't be a leader? Oh, I'm not saying that. You don't have, <laughs> not the wife, you have a legal wife and illegal wife. Which one is illegal? Wife? <laughs> the one that you've not gone to pay the diary. But uh, you are doing what? You are, she's living with you. You are stolen somebody's daughter. But whether, stolen. We, whether we like it or not, whether we like it or not, my brother, marriage staying together a husband and wife or staying you know you take we have to we have to wrap up we women have to wrap are so powerful we have plenty every of strong man you i agree with that yes i agree so with that the wife, i'm saying that if you are not lucky to have a wife that can or one of your wives or in hey, that one of your wives that can tell them my husband there are certain fights you don't have to go and win let's lose you lose your lost will make you more stronger there are certain fights mm. you go there are certain homes where so you when are you going to see you again? Where is, the, where is the campaign going? Oh, the campaign is very, going very well. Um, I'm done with Tamale. I'll be touring all the five regions. Uh, the, five minutes. I'll be going to the five. I'll be touring all the five regions in the country. Then uh, the minutes. five northern regions, and after that, I'll move to Kumasi and whatever. But it's coming so good. I'm surprised the response. Even when I somebody did, told me when I was going to interview you that yeah. he likes the way you dress. What is this? Are you Igbo? What's this cap? And oh, this? I'm, I'm, the hat is Igbo. You know, you know Kusasi. We, we know Kusasi dress. Kusasi well. dress very well. You yeah. know, we, we we dress. We wear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I mean, a lot of years in America should tell you that. Uh, I the mean, America is showing pa. There is parts and parcel of how, how I, you know. <laughs> That's Stephen Atubik. I have to leave it here. Thank you very much. We have so much to do. Let's go to the text messages and see what people are saying. I'd like to begin with Fatih. What are they saying? All right. So, Park over here says, this is the Edgemiso mentality and no wonder he lost the primaries of the NPP. Nakwe Kudanka says, Nigeria is 70% Muslims, but Christians like Good Luck Jonathan and Obasanjo have been president. Alan has really let me down. Tessa Oben says Alan has a short memory. Boniface said the political life has ended. We Muslims are waiting for him to come to our wards to campaign. We would ask him about this speech. 
Now, Pankofi comes again and says Mr. Alan Tremonton has shown beyond every reasonable doubt that he's a failed politician. You stepped all your productive years with NPP, and at a point where you are about to retire, you break away to form a movement. Now, Tessa Oben says Alan Tremonton is a tribal and religious bigot. Alan thinks that he must be a president at all costs. He would be humiliated beyond what he got at the NPP primaries. Alan has big ego. And lastly, coming from Al Haj Yusuf Hussein, he says it's not funny for a politician to keep lamenting about his opponents overtaking him in good deeds in both traditional and in the two dominant region, religions, that is Christianity and Islam. Alan should rather not forgive himself for being the political. Sorry, I can't see this. So he keeps on saying, he keeps blaming the affable vice president for his own failures. His recent statements that the Christian community shouldn't vote for a Muslim was very unfortunate. Alan should not forget that the predominant NPP Christian delegate saw the good in the vice president and still elected him to lead the great NPP. And there is absolutely nothing he can do about it. What do you have for us? Okay. Mr. Alan Tremonting has shown beyond every reasonable doubt that he is a failed politician. You served all your productive years with NPP, and at a point where you are about retiring, you break away to form an irrelevant movement. He lacks vision, that's what he says. Musa Baba Dean says that, unfortunately, there is no wise person in Alan's campaign team who could see the wrong in his religious bigotry and points out to him where he was going wrong. This isn't the right choice to be because he has succeeded in surrounding himself with emotional inexperience and greedy really defected MPP loyalties and can't be trusted with a bit of trust and best of same and beds of same feathers flock together. Last but not least, from Joti Paul, don't expect much from Alan's campaign. He's surrounded with guys without good scrapples. Antoinette. Okay, so George Buampon says, Alan has goofed big time. It's what Akanki Kujo says. Alan is very wicked and I think that he can kill. Well, that's quite huge. Um, from our sponsor, Lift and Elevators Ghana, Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say, but as humans, aging and physical infirmity stand our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use stairways day in and day out. Worry no more, because with portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, which is PVEs, you are sure of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It is simple to use self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility to choose from. You may call it luxury, but it is a necessary imperative for vertical mobility. Do not let aging or infirmity limit you. Get one for your easy vertical mobility at home or in your offices. It's affordable and can be installed within three days with modification to your building. Visit Lift and Elevators Ghana at Sakumono for your solutions and free consultations. Call us now on 0200-535-515 or email us at elevatorsgh at gmail.com. That's it. The Blue Jeans Energy Drink. Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been on the Ghanaian market for over 20 years. We already know what it does for the body. It contains vitamins and nutrients like vitamin B2, B3, B6, B12, as well as taurine and guarana, which are known to boost your strength and energy as well as promote high performance and endurance. Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been tested and tried. It is indeed the best. Blue Jeans Energy Drink is for bold and active men and women, so go on, grab a cold can and power your day. It's in shops nationwide. For bulk purchases, contact Budget Cash and Carry Limited on 0208-128-190 or 055-001-0000. Thank you very much, Fatih. It's always a pleasure to mount the touchscreen. All right. 
Hello! Okay, so this was very interesting, yeah? This was very, very interesting. The story broke, and I was looking at it with a lot of excitement because I was seeing how the society is changing. Okay, so the story says, uh, Wulomo, which is the traditional high priest of the Ga society, has taken a wife. Okay, so outreach started. Why is he going to get married to a 12 year old? Is that a police should go and catch him? Okay, all right. Then the Wulomo people, I like their, their stance. They were very bold. They came out and said, What are you talking about? The 12 year old that you say that we shouldn't marry. It's betrothal. Is it marriage? It's not, it's not marriage, it's betrothal. Then Nia Ikwe to a former attorney general came in in defense of the Wulomo. That was interesting and I was enjoying it because I knew where this was going. I've been thinking about these things. When nothing has happened, I just think about these things. Okay. So. I was very, very excited. I was just monitoring. And I was watching all the interviews when they were on CTFM. I was watching Kofi TV. I was watching, I was watching all the interviews. A very, very beautiful story. Wulomo says, I am, and the lady has been betrothed. It's not marriage. So it's not forced marriage. Then the lawyer said, oh, no, no. Even betrothal, there is something against it. And then they come up in the end and say that it's not even a physical marriage. It's a spiritual marriage. So what's your problem? Then they say, what's a spiritual marriage? It says, it's a spiritual marriage. Go to your Bible. Joseph and Mary, was it not betrothal? But how old was Mary? I don't know. The Bible didn't... Those Bible scholars... Okay, I have a pastor here. Maybe we can ask him. How old was Mary, the mother of Jesus, at the time it was said that she had been betrothed to Joseph? How old was Mary? Don't, don't mind me. I'm playing the devil's advocate, so I'm not indicating my position on the matter. I'm just raising the fundamental questions that appear in this conversation that we are pretending we haven't seen. We have seen it. We cannot just go and say that cancel that marriage. You can't say that. You can't. Because it is their custom. Go to Article 11 of the 1992 Constitution. Uh, please, if you can quickly get me Article 11 of the Republican Constitution, I want to show something to them. It's in Article 11. Some of the things he's done is in Article 11. It says customs, usages are part of the laws of Ghana. But the Article 11 shows a hierarchy of the laws of Ghana. It says, number one is the 1992 Constitution. That's the most important law. So has he violated something in the Constitution? He may have violated the rights, isn't it? The rights. Now, the right of a person to marry who he wants to marry. What kind of right is it? Is it first generation right? Is it second generation right? Is it third generation right? What kind of right is it? Is it fundamental in chapter 5 of the 1992 Constitution? Now, when you come down in Article 11, I'm sure they'll get it very soon. As you can, or if you just bring me the book, I can read it. Uh, uh, get, get, the, uh, get, get the book for me. Fatih Brace, please bring it if you can. All right, yeah. So we have a constitution here. So they brought it for me. Thank you. It's here. I I'll read it because uh, it's taking a while for them to put on the TV because we're already set. So don't, don't worry. Article 11, viewers, I'm going to read. Article 11, it's entitled The Laws of Ghana. And it says, The laws of Ghana shall comprise one, this constitution. Two, enactments made by or under the authority of parliament established under this constitution. So, one is the constitution. Two is acts of parliament. Three, any orders, rules, regulations made by any person or authority under a power conferred by this constitution. So, orders of the attorney general, orders of the president, orders of the IGP. Uh, IGP is a power under this constitution. So, they are number three. Number D, that is uh, four. The existing law and the common law okay now article 11 2 explains the common law of ghana shall comprise the rules of law generally known as common law the rules generally known as doctrines of equity and the rules of customary law including those determined by the superior court of judicature three for the purpose of this article customary law means the rules of law by which custom are applicable to particular communities in Ghana. <laughs> Those of us who were screaming, come and see. Article 11.3, it is explaining what customary law is. Customary law having been added to the laws of Ghana in Article 11.1, in 11.3, customary law is explained as follows. It said, it shall mean rules of law by which custom are applicable to particular communities in Ghana. <laughs> so, it, it's okay to feel uh, uh, 
Americanized and to feel anglicized and say that, oh, no, guys, you, see, you can even say it's demonic. Fair, fair enough. But the 1992 Constitution appears to recognize it. In Article 11, as I roll out, you see the letter from the Deputy Attorney General, and then we can. So it's an interesting matter. So there are, I identified a technical matter to this one, a technical reason for this story, and a social reason. The social reason uh, pronounces guilt on uh, and, uh, Wulomo. The technical reason is a different matter, especially now that they are saying that the marriage is spiritual. What we need to do is to find legislation, direct legislation, to contradict some of these acts. In doing so, they will come to Article 11.3 and say that they have protection under. Let's just take the facts now. On 17th May 2018, Stephen Akwete was installed Nungwa Gogbu Wolomo. Wolomo. Nungwa Gogbu Wolomo. Traditional high priest of the Nungwa people in Accra on the 30th of March 2024. So he was, he was um, made Wulomo in 2018. On the 30th of March 2024, the Bobu Wulomo engaged in customary rites purporting to, to join he and one lady believed to be 12 years old in a nuptial union. That's very well written by our lawyers. On 30th March, Bobu Wulomo engage in customary rights purporting to join he and one lady believed to be 12 years old in a nuptial union. Okay. Social media and sections of the society expressed dissatisfaction with the fact that a lady believed to be 12 years was being offered for marriage. On the 2nd of April 2024, the Mankralo of Nungwa traditional area, in an interview with Bernard Avlet on City Breakfast Show on City FM, stated that the said lady was actually 13 years old. Uh, he added plus one. said it's not. He told Bernard Avlet that it's not, it's not 12, it's 13. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Later on the same day in a press conference, same day, mind you, viewers, same day, the Nungwa Traditional Council has stated that na yomo ayemude. Ayemude. Na yomo ayemude. The spouse of Bobu Wulomo of Nungwa, Numo Bokete Lawechu, is currently 16 years old and not 12 years as previously reported. It's okay. That's the same day. Later that same day, the Bobu Wulomo's office intimated to the general public that the marriage was not a marriage as known in ordinary parlance, but was solely for spiritual reasons as she would be married to the deity and not the person. <laughs> they are defending themselves. Do they have a right to defend themselves? Maybe. Now they are telling you that what you are calling marriage is not, not marriage at all. It's spiritual, spiritual, you know. And then comes in uh, the government. Diana Asunabadapa, Deputy Attorney General, uh, writing for the Attorney General, writes to the CID as follows. And she says, to the Inspector General of Police, Ghana Police Service, Accra, attention, DCOP Faustina, AK and the Kofi, Director CID, investigation of alleged child marriage. Okay? The attention of the Office of the Attorney General and the Ministry of Justice has been drawn to publications by various media outlets of an alleged celebration of marriage between one Numo Bokete Lawechu and one girl child, Na Okromo, aged 12 years. As you are aware, Section 14 and 15 of the Children's Act 1998, Act 560, provides as follows. Right to refuse betrothal and marriage. A person shall not force a child to be betrothed, to be the subject of a dowry transaction, or to be married. A person shall not force a child. It's assumed that the child doesn't have capacity to accept betrothal. Because if we look at this strictly, it says uh, the right to refuse betrothal. A person has a right to refuse it. But if the girl says, I'm not refusing it, does the Lord take care of that? I'm not sure. Okay. The minimum age of marriage of whatever kind is 18 years. So this is uh, Madame Asuna Badapa who is writing to CID. Penalty for uh, contravention. A person who contravenes a provision of section 2 of 14 commits an offense and is liable to summary conviction to a fine not exceeding 250 penalty units or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding one year or to both fine and the term of imprisonment. The allegations, if proven, constitute a criminal offense for which all persons involved must face prosecution. We would appreciate it if you could cause your outfit to conduct 
the necessary investigations of the alleged child marriage to enable our office to do the needful. Please do not hesitate to contact our office should you require further information. Kindly accept the assurances of my highest esteem. And that's from Diana Sunaba Dapa, Deputy Attorney General. That's going to be very, very complicated, wouldn't it? It's going to be very complicated and interesting. So, the people say what they did is spiritual marriage. Should the matter end there? Should the police prosecute? Should we have legislation? But this is reality dawning on us. Isn't it? This is reality. We are understanding that we are not, we, we have a culture that is going to push back against the modernity that we are bringing in. Because we are bringing the modernity in and the anti-LGBT narrative is that we are being too modern, so much more modern, that we are becoming evil. So we are saying that a man should marry a man and we think it's modernity. We are saying that a man should have a husband who is a man and we say it's modernity. Traditional people are telling us that they are going to push back against that. So we have to have a conversation. It is fantastic that we are doing this jaw joint rather than taking knives and guns. Nobody has taken knives and guns to Nungua. But this is very interesting. We will have to drill this down to determine how we fashion and develop the society. I'm trying to put a beautiful panel together sometime later where we talk about people, places, and society, and modernity. Where we are going for it. We can do, we can do, we can do some nice show on uh, that thing. How do they call it these days? Uh, Mikhail, I think they put a microphone that we're trying to podcast. We can do a nice podcast on that one. We need to do a podcast on that one. Young people in the university, what do you think about this? Send me a text message. What is your view? The people say the thing they did is uh, spiritual marriage. It is not subject to the law. You cannot, it's not physical. So you can't say somebody was forced to marry. Which marriage? There is no marriage. The marriage that occurred is spiritual. And that the young lady is married to the deity. At some point, the police told us that they have the lady and the mother in custody. What does it mean? It is critical for parliaments to sit down and see how we move forward with these kinds of laws. That's what this is calling on. It is calling on parliament to look at it. Because you can't say you are right and they are wrong. How are they wrong? How is the Ulomo wrong? He's wrong that he's done what? This is a spiritual marriage that he's been practicing for 200 years. The Nungwa people have been sitting at that place since the 17th century. They've been doing it. You come and tell them it's wrong, but you are bringing LGBT into Ghana. It's going to be a problem. It's going to be a real problem. We need to discuss it. We are not in favor of punishing the 12 year old. No, no, far from that. She has to be saved. She has to be saved. But we have to have a bigger conversation about these matters and stop being ostrich and saying that, uh, by the way, the people who are writing, and by the way, Ghana is backward. 12 year old, Ghana is backward. The people in Ghana think that the LGBT is backward too. They even think it's demonic. They think it's evil. And you are sitting in London and writing to us in Ghana that you, your country is backward. How are you marrying a 12-year-old? When they were doing the coronation of King Charles, did you see the things they did? It is tradition and custom. When they covered the thing and they put Prince Charles inside and he was going to be king and they brought and they, they covered. They were, it was live on television for the whole world. But they covered some part of it. They didn't want the whole world to see that part because it is their sacred customs and traditions they have their sacred customs you watch on tv we applaud your sacred customs will be changed okay let's go to parliament and pass a law to outlaw it otherwise they will also outlaw the things that you are saying you went to radgers university you went to mit you went to harvard you went to london school of economics so you are modern so a man can marry a man because it's modern they are telling you that you are a joker what did the police say? The Ghana Police Service has identified and located a 12-year-old girl who is alleged to have been married to the 63-year-old Bogbu Wulomo in Nungwa, Accra. The girl and her mother are currently under police. Uh, the girl and her mother are currently under police protection. The Ghana Police Service is working with the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection and the Department of Social Welfare to provide her with the necessary support while the matter is being investigated thank you very much for the police but the more important thing we need to do here is to institute legislation let's let's move on uh, what else do we find javier sosu is it not him uh our member of parliament from madina is reported to us he said arrest bobo wulomo over child marriage francis sosu petition cid what offense are you going to arrest him under what's the offense you're going to arrest him under Let's see the first interview that was granted. Let's see the Kofi TV interview, if you have that one straight. I think that's the most interesting one. Let's see the Kofi TV interview as we wrap up and bring in our Anglican priest. Let's see the Kofi TV interview. Yeah. 
a man saying in a air canoe, your final ma or does any be our dear. Nemum a bayano, a bayer in fear has sunny a chirini. Ye woe a bosom cassie, a midina neponani. Sir Bosom cassie or war irinum and nine. Nasa irinum and nine. One way juma, one way ane, a mania, any a mamre, a say ye cools you, say ye praho, say ye manadiani. Ndi ya kekea ya kahu. Saa hiru ni muna mwa mwe jumano nu. Na abaye ya ne. Ni huwa baase mwi. Onu ne ye. Emani yina kea chile. A osan ye penyini. Ewo. Eh, Boso mwa. Ni hiru ni mwa mwa. Ni vise. Onu ni dibre no. E ye boso mwa ke siye. Bakuwa ye frena ye mwe di. A ewo. E ye shina ye mu. Ndi onu ni dibre ni se. Ten biya ne si se. O ye abe bunua. Abaye bunu at sebi sebi bem odnim bema na sa di brano so ye de mawa e ye ensuo aye beko na ye de aye amane e wo ason ye ha ana se krom e efikasiem ni nyina na adwuma no no ba bi ye se ensuo no e ho kora e na ho adwuma nyina ono so na adwuma no no e na se edru afi beso a ya di ebrunsa eko jwa kesiye mu ya di ako bompa ya ama omayi nkramayi ni nina na juma ni se obeswa obeswa nwa se ensenyi no nwa so aswa ya di ako jwa kesiye mu ya di ako bompa ya ya di yapa ya ama nkramayi nina inti onye nungwa hankuwa ba penyini nwa koye nkramayi nina ba penyini ya teso osha osha na juma se Enfi ena yenye na uomo ene enfi ena ya kodi shasi yenye juma. Yo, bra eba ni se o mami fe fruno na mami no awono unti mengo inti akodani di o mami yam enfi mi yenu na wamu pebe bi a wamdeni befa na sebi weti mi awo inti wambe pi e asonya ha. Iti empaibo eni alisegu na ipie sewu. Akwadano akoye abosomba. Iti na abane saa. Iti amamre ni amani ya seye yi nina anu. Ye ye na soni heya. Ewo bosumkesi ye ni na mami unyane bano uye. Owu ni beni uye ya kwade yi onsani nanti. Mfie miyuni no santi fomu. E uye mpo no onyuya. E nusu osani dene bae. E miye ya amani. Ma bosom ni ye se Obe ye manan nanti na mo mo biya mfane sa nkano If you say ono Na e ye ni yiri ke chire ya Obe ye ni Obe kura ni nyume nina E ti be ye Enfi ye be ye insi ye ni Na Ok so he said that the To wait To translate He said that the When the mother of the The child was pregnant uh, she was unable to deliver for two years the pregnancy remained with her that's quite odd but that's what he said uh, he, he was unable to deliver uh, and then they, they sought spiritual help to be able to get her to deliver eventually she did and then the child wouldn't work for two years they sought spiritual help again in the process they had committed the child like um like, like um what do you call it the um the story is it samuel samuel whose mother dedicated him to the church forever yes because the, the, the mother, was it Sarah or Rebecca? One of them. Rebecca? Are you sure? Hey, please check. <laughs> I think it's Sarah or Rebecca. I can't remember. One of them had a, a childbearing problem. Went to the chief priest, prayed for it, and said that if God gives me the child, I'll give the child back to the church. So I'll give the, ch the child back to the deity. That's something similar that they've done. That's, that's what they believe. Hannah was the name. Great. Thank you, Hannah. Hannah was the name of, uh, of the mother. So they brought the child. And uh, they dedicate the child to God. And he became a prophet of the Lord. That's what he's saying. He's suggesting that this is something similar they are doing. And he'll tell you that it's in your Christian Bible. It's in Jewish. It's steeped in Jewish culture. It's steeped in Islamic culture. Bethrothal. Anyway. Uh, the, uh, Bob Ulam or Mr. Stephen Akwete is also a politician. And you know, I like politicians. So when I saw that he's a politician, I said, oh, this is great. He's a politician. He is. Who is Stephen Akwete? Now, Nungwa Bokete Lawechu. Uh, introducing the aspiring Greater Accra Regional NDC Chairman. Stephen Akwete uh, served as Assistant Secretary 
of the June 4 movement, Nungwa branch, from 1980, said true Keda, the Wulomo who wants to marry or who is uh, presiding over the spiritual marriage, is a true Keda. He is from 1980 to 1981. He was the June 4 movement boss at Nungwa, and then he became a secretary. He became the secretary of the Nungwa area PDC. PDC, those of you who are too young, to remember pdc means people's defense committee it was a subset of the rollins pndc and it was set up in communities to promote the ideals of the revolution so that's pdc uh, he became the secretary of the nungwa pdc 1982 to 83 he also became the secretary of the nungwa cdrs in uh, cdr means committee for the defense of the revolution i don't know whether there's an s there but cdr is committee for the defense of the revolution so he's a proper proper kid he's a revolution man who defends the revolution who is a member of the ndc and who wanted to be the ndc's greater accra regional chairman his name is steven akwete but now uh, he's known as numu bokete lawe uh, chu under the auspices of the ghana government he went to bulgaria in 1984 to pursue further studies in method of youth organization for a short period he returned to the USSR, Russia, by government of Ghana sponsorship and obtained diploma in social sciences from the Lenin School of Social Sciences. The guy is a proper kid. He's a socialist. In 1984 to 88, he was the head of information, culture, and education at the Accra District uh, CDR office. CDR is a Committee for the Defense of the Revolution. Stephen Akwete became the head of monitoring and coordination of the Greater Accra region of the CDRs between 1988 and 1992. The NDC party, after losing 2001 elections to MPP, Stephen Akwete assumed the Crow or Constituency Chairmanship Sports Administrator. Stephen Akwete became the management member and assistant team manager of Accra Hearts of Folk. Hey! <laughs> Politics and football go together, don't they? So, the Wulomo is a politician and a football administrator. Politician for the NDC, Accra has a folk for football. That's who he is. So now we've told you who he is. He's a normal person. He's like you and I. He's not different. I like politicians. And as soon as we realized that he was a member of the NDC, we did an NDC montage for him. But the Nungwa story has not ended yet. This is the NDC montage. Numo, Ufane, Wangabo, Wangabo, Wangabo. Steven, Akwiti. Uh, this is your montage. Arise, arise for Ghana, of a son of the land. Go away and seek your future, before love and our God. From vision to vision. You should know that he was a member of the NDC when he said police should go and arrest him. Anyway, let's take the last set of text messages on this one uh, before we go to our interview with our Anglican priest. Okay, uh, Fati, let me start with you. What are they saying? All right, so Messiah Jakum says, the Wulomo is hiding behind custom. The ceremony was a real marriage. They've been caught red-handed, so all sort of explanations are being given. Now, Mark Prince Israel says, Paul, kindly check the Children's Act Section 14 of Children's Act 1998, Act 560. Has a problem in that law, make a day tell the age at which one can be betrothed. And again, the Criminal Offense Code Act 14, that is consent that that a person below 12 cannot give consent now charles fafanyo says paul please refer to article 26 of the 1992 constitution which places some limits on custom practices also marriage in ghana is between a male and a female and not any other object yao bafo also says according to section 14 2 of the children's act 1998 at 560 the minimum age of any marriage, that is, any form of marriage is 18. The key word here is any form of marriage. 
Now, lastly, coming from Aaron Babaki, says the law on child marriage in Ghana is an important tool for protecting the rights of children and preventing harmful practices. However, the enforcement of these laws remains a challenge and concerted efforts are needed to address the root causes of child marriage in the country by addressing issues such as poverty, lack of education, and gender inequalities. Ghana can work towards eliminating child marriage and ensuring a brighter future for its children. What do you have for us? Okay, from Amejo. Today has been the best analysis I have heard regarding the 12-year-old girl. We as a nation must be careful how we choose to interpret other cultural norms. Respecting other cultural practices is very important for the peace of Ghana. Look how the Ga chief spoke perfectly on Kofi TV. That shows how the Ga people are open-minded to learn other languages. Rio Max B says, please Paul, read Article 11 of the 1992 Constitution which found on any such marriage in whatever form until 18 years. From Charles Fafanyo, Good evening, Paul. Please refer to Article 26 of the 1992 Constitution, which places some limits on custom practices. Also, marriage in Ghana is between male and female, and not any other object. Lastly, Nana Wusu says, Paul, Reach out at us, please. Owusu Sitri, UK. Antoinette. says, Paul, this is wrong in every way. There is no justification whatsoever. They can deny that there is no marriage or whatever, but as soon as they start their practice, they will subject the girl to activities or activities of an adult, including having affairs with her, which is wrong and can amount to child abuse and therefore must be condemned in every form. Remember, we abolished most cultural practices, which we call our smoothed cultural practices. This practice is of the, isn't of any difference. Now, Ali Zakari says, Paul, should be told, sometimes I go hard on you with some of your stance, though you are entitled to that. But when you also get it right in your analysis, I have no option than to be fair and commend you on your stance. On Honorable Alan Tremantin's statement at the Church of Pentecost, I also like the way you are dissecting the issue of the Nungwa chief priest married to the alleged 12 year old girl and what the law equally says on that. Now, Daniel Aiken says um, the people who are involved for trocosy are married to the deity, and the priest can have them for wife if they want. But in this case, the girl in question can be married when she is of age to anybody at all. Now, Kwejo Jane Fibonsu II says, Paul, the Nungwa traditional authorities miscommunicated their latest explanation if isn't anything to go by. At the beginning of the program, they could have made it clear that it is not a physical marriage and that the girl can marry a different person upon reaching maturity. The inconsistencies in the explanations are what are creating doubts about their position. Now, Bismarck Nana Atakofi seems to not believe that the girl spent two years in the womb of her mother, and he says, how is that even possible? Now, Eben Ofe um, is also in awe of the chief priest's um, ability to speak fluent tree. He says, hey, Ulomo speaks good tree. Very impressive. Um, Joti goes to say, Paul, how is this any different from the trocosy custom that was abolished? And they add hashtag bold solutions for our future. And then lastly, Ibn Ofei says, the mere mention of Xavier Sosu triggers me to join this discussion, such a wannabe human rights activist. Um, Emmanuel Kofi Kufo says, for the chief priest to speak so fluently, I am su simply amazed by history. Now back to you, Paul. Hmm. Ah, uh, article 26, we'll read it. I see a few people said I should read it. There's, there's a problem in my house, viewers. There's a problem in my house, so maybe I have to close early. Why is there a problem in my house? I'm just getting text message from the house. Manchester United apparently lost their game. You know, my house is divided. There's Chelsea people there. There's Manchester United. The Chelsea people are laughing at the Manchester United people, so they are calling me that to hurry up and come home because I'm one of the Manchester people. When I'm not there, they are laughing at them. So uh, when I was, when the game started, I saw 2-0. Then I, mean, I stopped watching. I was getting ready for the program. You know, I was with my people. We're looking at it. 
Uh, then they told me that, oh, Charlie scored one. I said, oh, everything, Hank, what's what? Then they said 2-2. Two, two. I said, oh, that's not bad. Then I go to the studio, they told me 3-2. Three, two. I said, yeah, glory, glory, my United. Ah, they had 3-3. Three, three. Then the program started, so me, I was busy doing my Kusia uh, Ahoy uh, and Atubiga interviews. Ah, now, they say Chelsea won by four goals to three. Ah, what's happened? Okay, after, after the game, I'll watch. After this, too. But I have to go home because... There, there's fights. There's fight there. And once Chelsea came back, you know, Chelsea put they are very loud. So it's a problem. But anyway, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we are going to have uh, an interview with uh, a reverend, a revered reverend minister about the future of the church. We are still in Istanbul, aren't we? After the break, wait for that interview. is coming. This is a call to you. The dreamers. The ones that see no boundaries. Dreamers take a chance. The explorers that chart their own path. Along the vibes connect the energy. The ones that dare to challenge the status quo. Get connected, feel the When others try to think outside the box. You wonder what box Catch the wave, enjoy the ride. to the architects of their journeys. Every connection is an opportunity to explore every experience. This is your call to adventure. Your journey begins here. Be bold, be daring, be free. Connecting passions, connecting dreams, connecting ambitions. Telesel, connecting energies. It's good to stay strong together. It's good to share nutritious meals cooked with Frital, a vitamin A fortified oil. Frital, you deserve a life of goodness. This advert is FDA approved. Just like how water refreshes you on a hot sunny day, it takes a refreshing bath with a life soap to feel its pleasant fragrances. Leaving you with soft, smooth and fresh looking skin. You make me feel alive, you really brighten my day, day, my day. Available in lemon, coconut, rose and aloe vera fragrance. A life soap. Feel fresh, feel alive. To be honest, I'm so nervous about starting this new world on Monday. Oh please, I know you'll be great at it. You should be worried about what benefits they have. Example, do they have health insurance? I doubt they will have that for internet. So no shaking. I have any child already. Ask your son a line, ting, ting, ting. Ina, look at you. What are you going to do in your office when you can just download your app to register for an NHIS membership? Yes, my people. You heard right. You can now download and register your membership on my NHIS app. No long queues or tedious paperwork. All you need is your Ghana card to register for yourself and for others. Once you register, you get a new digital NHIS card on your phone. My NHIS app gives you access to credentialed health facilities and services across the country. NHIS covers over 95% of disease conditions in Ghana. Access to healthcare just got easier. Now let me sign up quickly. Miss Seth, I'm starting work next month. Welcome.com We are back, bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Betway starts strong with your front two, with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm food now. In the middle, you've got all the control, with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more 
with Betwin. And you want to see. Subscribers have been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. In today's modern world, stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, the elevator people. Oh, I should to be. Eh, uh, me. Ma, <laughs> the Jamal washing powder for furnace sachets are kesi in numaba. Eh, ye inke kaya ankasa. Ah, ni ma. For Jamal washing powder, boto tetsi. Can ye ma odebe jiawari? Hey! Jamal. <laughs> New Jamal washing powder. Eh, ma nye me niti. Ne mousu ye sham. O hoka fu a, o ma wanta di ye niti. FD aje e dre di enkra ato ya to. Okay, welcome to our holy conversation. This is very biblical, isn't it? Uh, we have with us um, Reverend Emmanuel Kwesi Amafo, uh, Doctor Reverend Doctor Canon Emmanuel Kwesi Amafo. He's he's here to share uh, some important facts with us. We are as church people and as Christians, we are all concerned about the future of the church. The church is being challenged by many, 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 many things. And the, I don't know whether the Bible predicted or whether Revelations predicted that there was going to be these challenges. But the Bible also said that, in fact, if the uh, Savior tarries, he may not come to meet anyone. So it looks like the superior deities have understood that there is such a major challenge to humans in terms of being able to make it into the kingdom, such that the longer he tarries, the fewer people he will get. So everyone is interested in are we doing the right thing at this time? Have we been influenced by society to change something? And now you've presented this book about the future of the church. What do you, why did you write a book like that? Did you get concerned that something has to be told? My concern primarily was that um, on this continent of, of ours, Africa, the church is growing numerically. Mm -hmm. Okay? In fact, most... Um, scholars will tell you that the center of gravity of Christianity 
has moved from the north to the south. Okay, so in Africa, in Latin America, and Asia, this is where the church is really expanding numerically. My concern is that uh, when we go into the Bible, when we go into the New Testament, when we look at the lives of people transformed by the gospel in the New, in the New Testament, when we come to our day, we don't see that. We don't see the transformation of people's lives, of communities, of societies that we read about in the New Testament. And my observation, my study, is that the reason for that is that our church today, although it's growing numerically, is not growing spiritually because we have moved away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, which brought about those transformations in the New Testament. So the book is a call, is a clarion call for the church to come back to the gospel, to stand up for the gospel. And it's a study of the is, book. Is it a reference to the African church? The African church is our focus, but of course the book addresses the church worldwide. Mm. But our focus, our interest is primarily uh, the church on our continent. And the book is a study of uh, the uh, epistle of Jude, which is a very short, it's a 25 verse epistle. Jude? Jude, yes. He's not one of the big ones. No. Jude, but he was a brother of Jesus Christ. Blood brother. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was a blood brother of Jesus Christ. Uh, so he wrote this 25 verse epistle. In fact, it's the epistle that comes just before the last book of the Bible. And in his epistle, he was calling the church away from false teaching that had come into the church. Even then? Even then. Oh, this goes back. False goes, teaching. False teaching goes back. In fact, in Matthew chapter 7, you may recall Jesus saying that um, uh, beware of wolves who will come in sheep's clothing. And he was but that was predictive. To, no, it wasn't happening then. The yes, Jesus message yes, was yes, predictive. But he was predicting what would happen mm -hmm. after his departure when, with the birth of the New Testament church mm -hmm. and with the spread of the gospel beyond uh, Israel into, into the rest of the Roman Empire. And that's exactly what happened. So in fact, the letters of Paul, uh, you see Second Peter, Peter, uh, uh, Jude, they all talked about false teaching and calling the church to be aware of false teaching and moving away from false teaching. Because, I mean, think about it. Here we, we, Christianity is the story of the gospel coming against the, the world, the world that lives without reference to God and his will. And the enemy, the, you see, in, in the Christian faith, we see the Christian as facing three enemies. You have the world, that's the godless world that lives without reference to the will uh, or the, or, or, or of God. Then you have the flesh. The flesh is the enemy within ourselves, our fallen nature that is predisposed to sin. And then you have the, the Satan. Now, Satan obviously holds men and women in bondage to, uh, to worldliness, to carnality, to godlessness. So as the gospel makes inroads and begins to rescue and to redeem men and women from his clutches, he's going to fight back. And what's the easiest way to fight back? He goes back to the same trick he used in the Garden of Eden, bringing in lies, bringing in things, that are contrary to the will of God. And so the, the spread of false teaching is, 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 is a major uh, problem uh, for the church today. Okay. And, and so this book, as I said, is an exposition of the book of Jude that says, my dear brothers and sisters, that is church worldwide, mm -hmm. let's be aware that some of the things that we are allowing into the church do not match the gospel. Hence the title, Stand Up for the Gospel. Okay, let's drill down to some of the things you may have observed as yes. your, I mean, you have spent maybe 20 years in this, uh, yes. this business of through semin seminary and all that. Yes. Um, since I'm trying to put it together, if I go to church in the mm -hmm. morning, mm -hmm. the charismatic church, mm -hmm. and uh, on Sunday we begin with intercessory prayer, and then we go on to what we call praise and worship. And then we have a message from the pastor or a visiting pastor or somebody. He will normally preach from the Bible, re making references to biblical quotations. He might come up with a revelation of a scripture that we already know, that he has seen a revelation to it and he's going to bless the church with that. He might say something we know already. 
he might take a scripture like uh, the very famous John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever he can take the whosoever and deliver a message out of it according to what they call the unction of the Holy Spirit church ends up uh, we pay tithe and offerings uh, tithe is paid at the end of the month we call it first fruits it is called for by the pastor offering is paid every Sunday two offerings a Sunday after that I go home Tuesday we have teaching service I come to teaching service Thursday, we have Covenant Family, where in the communities we are meeting to discuss the Word of God. And it is also uh, uh, presented by the pastor. He does the documentation. So all communities are looking at maybe the book of Jude this month, and we are all doing that. Okay. Where should I locate the error? Where is the error? Okay. Now, uh, the, the Bible, um, the correct interpretation of the Bible requires very serious attention to the context. Now, there are various contexts in the Bible. You have the, um, the Bible context itself. What is, the, what is the grand message of the Bible? What is the grand narrative of the Bible? You have to look at that when you're talking about any particular scripture. How does it fit into the grand narrative? Then you come to the book of the Bible that you're preaching from. That's the book context. The prophet Isaiah, what is his message? What is he saying? So if I'm preaching from Isaiah, how does this passage in Isaiah fit into Isaiah's overall message? Then you have to look at the chapter context. Okay, This chapter of Isaiah, what is the primary message here? To Isaiah's original readers, first of all, how were they supposed to understand it? Because how they were supposed to understand it is what we take now and apply to our context. Then you look at now the verses, the, 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 the paragraphs that come before that passage and the paragraphs that come after that. You see, that so sounds no, theological. No, yes, just a minute. That's the literary context. Then you have the geographic context. You have the cultural context. Let me read for my Bible. Where is it? <laughs> um, you have the, 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 sorry. The, yeah. My Bible is here. Let me just get something and then. Go on, please. You go have on. the geographic context. You have mm-hmm. the historical context. You have the cultural context. Uh, all so, that yes so in my morning you, devotion you cannot in my morning devotion i should look for context yes, yes, paragraph you, before you cannot that. understand no the preacher you're talking about the pastor who comes to explain yes i get I'm that talking about the pastor. i get that but so for the, me a christian the, the pastor must explain the scriptures but correctly. hasn't the new testament de-emphasized the role of the pastor when he said that he has poured his spirit upon all flesh Hasn't it de-emphasized the role of the pastor? So we hear charismatic say that we are all we are a chosen generation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood uh, that should show forth the glory of Him who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous okay, light. Okay. That's for all of us, isn't it? Well, every Christian, everyone who has personalized the gospel, mm-hmm. repented of their sin, and received the life of Christ, yes. has living in him or her the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. The Spirit of God, as you read the Word of God gives you understanding, gives you illumination. But we have those who are specifically gifted and trained to teach the body of Christ the scriptures. Okay? Mm -hmm. So these are our church leaders. These are the pastors and so on. So they have a place Mm -hmm. and they have a role Mm -hmm. to play. uh, So that if they're doing their but jobs, they tell if, us they, that. if they're do, doing their jobs the right way, mm-hmm. what they teach us, what they, how they direct us, help us in our own private devotions now to bring that understanding that enables us to understand the scriptures and to apply to our so lives the and problem, the power of the Holy Spirit. The problem really is the message, not the yes. conduct of service or the conduct of Christians. It's really about the, the person preaching. He must get us right. Yes. And how do we know that he doesn't get us right? The Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. Yes. Is that enough? Yes, by their fruit you shall know but them. But what you're describing then, is very theoretical. You take the context, the context before, the context after. If you look at the life of the pastor and it does not match the message he's preaching, there's something wrong. But in this modern world, it is difficult and almost impossible to know the life of the pastor. Because I have a pastor. He comes to church. I don't see him again until next Sunday. I don't go to his office. I, don't, I only see his Facebook message, which is all gospel. I don't know anything about him. How do I ascertain his life? Well, like you said, Christ said, by their fruit. You How shall do I them. know the fruits? The fruit of a pastor. He has to do something they, wrong for me to hear. Well, or, not necessarily. He may have done something wrong, but I didn't know. That's true. Jesus Christ said, <laughs> the thoughts. 
lawyers say thoughts is not a crime jesus christ said the thoughts of a man is a crime or it's an offense in god's law so this by their fruits we shall know them mm-hmm. i have a pastor who appears to live a great Correctly. life yes. but his thoughts are faulty how will i know that you will not know that but god knows it does he not yeah but i'm under the authority of this pastor he's yes. continuously teaching me yes. i am so impressed with his biblical mm-hmm. knowledge i believe that it is helping me mm-hmm. But I don't know his lifestyle. So somebody comes to tell us, oh, your pastor, he, 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 he uh, delves in narcotic drugs. What shall I do with that? That's by the fruits I shall know them. So yes. I stop the church? Well, you need to investigate. Is it somebody who is just spreading false rumors about your pastor? What about For forgiveness? Example, what about forgiveness? You need to, first of all, Paul, you need to investigate. Is what is being said about the pastor accurate? Yeah. You see, if it is accurate... You, you have the responsibility to maybe bring other Christians If I have no basis to, to, to know to, whether to it's true or not, so there's, no, there's very little ways you can find. These pastors are superstars these days. Well, see, that's the other thing. Where is the servant leadership that Christ talks about in, 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 the, in the clergy today? Where is, where is the humility? Where is the service? Oh, where is the service? That he's a superstar doesn't mean he's not humble. It just means that he's very influential because of the teachings or because of the crowd that follows him or because of the size of his church and the size of his influence he may be a very humble person but he has bodyguards he has a fleet of cars he has aeroplanes he, bishop Oye depot may be humble but he's, he's well, a very powerful well, well, man how does that match the the humility and the simplicity of the life of christ but uh, bill gates is simple but he is very influential very simple yeah, but we're not talking uh, about... Yeah, case. but I'm, I'm giving about, you an example. Church yeah, so you can have a church leader who is simple, but he's... I'm saying that influence does mm-hmm. not mean that you are not simple. He may be very simple, but his influence is huge. So, uh, well, what's what, his name? What, the, uh, what, what makes them influence? The Facebook founder, what's his name? Zuckerberg. Mm-hmm. He walks around the world with a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. That's how he goes around the world. Mm-hmm. And sneakers. That's simple. But his private jet is a billion dollar. Well, is that simple? It's, it's but a, he's it's a, a, it's a billion If he shows do- up here, he's a, a very simple it's a, guy. He's a billion dollar Yes. Jet. Yeah, he's a, he's a founder many, of Facebook. How many, pe- how many people in the world have a billion dollar jet? <laughs> yeah, but he's the founder of Facebook. So if he's yes, a pastor, but Clefrol Dollar was flying in private jets. Exactly. But he may be a humble person. That's what we're saying. Your humility should be seen not just in the way you talk or whatever, but even in, in, in your lifestyle, it should show. It should show. If the ordinary person in your pulpit who is tithing or giving mm. offerings and so on, if you're taking their money and buying a, 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 a private jet for... Well, he didn't necessarily buy the... There's a rich man in the church, uh, uh, Chief Olumide, who bought the private jet for the pastor. I may be in the church, I'm not wealthy, but I'm there, I pay my tithe, he goes to the church, but so look me, they bought him a private jet, so but, he's using but, it. But you know that's not the case. In most cases, it is not one rich person in the church buying these things for these people. These, these, these assets, uh, Creflo Dollar and all these not other... Sure. Then sometimes they say, okay, let's get back to the scripture. So <laughs> let me give you an example of scripture. Let's do context, okay. context then. Okay, so this I'm reading from the book of John, chapter 16, mm-hmm. and I, I am uh, starting from 16.1. Okay. I'll probably end on uh, 16.4. It okay. says, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming when whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. That's true of Apostle Paul, as Saul, as he then was. Mm-hmm. This is true of him. He killed people and believed that he was doing God a service. Mm-hmm. This is uh, uh, John writing. Mm-hmm. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Mm-hmm. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. This scripture seems to me as straightforward. You say that we should have context. We should look at the one that came before, one that comes after. Okay. Let let me read a a scripture in in John's John's gospel to explain what I mean. Okay. There you go. I'm going to John chapter 20. And I'm going to read... um, I'm going to read verses uh, to explain what you're trying to say. Yes, it? to explain what I'm trying to say. So this is John 20, verse 30 and 31. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
Yes. And truly, mm -hmm. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Mm -hmm. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So John is telling us why he wrote his gospel. Okay? Mm -hmm. he, what John did was he looked at all the miracles of Jesus Christ. All of it. Yes, and he selected seven. In the Gospel of John, you have only seven, gosp uh, seven miracles. And these miracles, John is referring to them as signs. Signs. Mm -hmm. Signs which uh, point to the fact that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. So that those who read the Gospel will put their faith in him. And by putting their faith in him, they may have eternal life. So here is the book context. Paul, uh, John is saying, this is why I wrote my gospel, mm -hmm. that you may do that. And I've selected these specific signs which point to this person being who he claimed to be. So that's the book context. So the passage you read, you re you read from John 16, mm -hmm. this is Christ speaking. Mm -hmm. What is he saying to the disciples? Why is he saying that? When did he say that? In John 16, He's talking to them just before he went to the cross. John 16 is part of the whole passage from John 13 to the end of 17, which we refer to as the upper room discourse. This is the conversation Christ had with his disciples the night uh, that he went into the Garden of Gethsemane and was uh, betrayed and arrested and then went to the cross the following day. So you cannot interpret John 16 disembodied from that context that this was the upper room discourse christ is talking to them in the sense of urgency because he knows what is going to happen to him the following day you see so that's what i mean that you you need to look at the words he spoke when he spoke them who he spoke it to what was the message he intended to impart into them to them at that time and so on and here in john 20 30 31 you have the book context the entire the reason John wrote. How will the, you understand? A, a so, church person listening to the preacher mm -hmm. be able to make all of these assessments? No, the preacher has a responsibility to, to, in, 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 to be brief, but to explain these things in a few minutes to the congregants so that when they take the Bible, they know what, uh, what, what, what they're reading. Otherwise, Paul, the danger is that you can take any verse out of any place in the Bible to come up with any story, to come up with any theology, to come up with any reason, any excuse to behave in any way. That's very dangerous. The Bible cannot be used like that. The Bible is the Word of God. This is the written Word of God that t brings us to Christ, who is the living Word of God, you see. So we need, to, we need to treat the Word of God with reverence and with the appropriate care and attention that it requires, if it is going to be of benefit to us. So in this book, we have explained these things and we have given simple illustrations and, 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 and um, to help people to know how to do that mm. so that they walk with God. What are some of the obvious things that the church is doing that's wrong? That, can I take the Bible from yeah. me? That the church is doing that's wrong that may take people away from, from the gospel? Well, um, the first thing Paul, the first thing is the departure from the gospel. That's a, that's a great concern to me. That's the first that's thing. That's very ironic a lot because the gospel is the centrifugal force it's supposed to be. with which the charismatics and the church people do their work. It, it is supposed so to be. So how then do you it, say? It, it, no, it is supposed to be, but today, if you attend any average large church, the chances are what you'll hear are motivational talks. You believe in yourself, work, uh, da, 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 da. but that's, the pulpit is not for that. The pulpit is for the gospel. Paul, I'm telling you, people... How is the our, gospel our pastors, different? Our, our, our pastors, our, our church leaders are veering off from the gospel. But why is the gospel different from a motivational message? The message of the gospel is motivational, isn't it? Not really. You see, the gospel ten, uh, turns or directs us to Jesus Christ. Let me explain. Maybe let me explain what the gospel is. Shall I yes, do that? Yes, please. Okay. You and I, Paul, are sinners. Mm-hmm. Because we're sinners, we stand condemned before a holy and righteous God. And we are spiritually separated from him. And we will be judged very harshly 
by this holy God unless we receive his forgiveness but he cannot just forgive us because we say please forgive us because as Paul said in, in, in Romans 3 23 the wages of sin is death now by death he's referring to spiritual separation from God now in order to for us to escape that fate we need the forgiveness of God now the forgiveness of God is the reason in the Old Testament, the Old Testament people uh, uh, sacrifice the blood of bulls and goats to atone for their sins. Mm -hmm. But Paul, it's not the, blood, the, the bulls and the goats who have sinned against God. It's human beings like you and I who have sinned against God. So ultimately, it requires the blood of a human being to atone for the sins of human beings. But we need a human being who has no sin of his own. And we need a human being who is willing to take our place. And we need a human being who can represent all of us. So God himself, who alone has no sin, became a human being in the form of Jesus Christ. Who, like John 3.16, as you just quoted, because of his love for us, he willingly, he willingly went to the cross. So that the blood of a human being who has no sin and who is willing to do that, would be atoned for your sin and my sin. So when the Spirit of God convicts us of sin and we place our faith in what Christ did for us and we repent of our sins, God forgives us. He forgives us on the basis of what Christ has done for us. In Christ, our sin has been punished, has been atoned for. If we, we commit the sin again... We, just a minute. Mm -hmm. We're forgiven, we come into right standing with God and we become... We become the children of God. And of course, the, Bible, the, the church has different ways of describing this. Being born again, which is a phrase that Christ himself coined, and you're saved, which is Paul's uh, words and so on. If we sin again? We are, okay. That's a good question. Now, sin, the word sin, in the Old Testament, is the Hebrew word hata. In the New Testament, it's the Greek word hamatano. Both have the same meaning. They mean to miss the mark, to miss the mark of God's holiness, to miss the mark of God's righteousness, and so on. Now, when we place our faith in Christ, as I just explained, so that Christ, the death and res resurrection of Christ has atoned for our sins, what God does is he performs a spiritual operation on us in which he removes us from the first Adam who sinned and places us in Christ who is the second Adam. So we're no longer in the first Adam. We're no, our, our nature now, has the, we have the new nature of Christ. We no longer want to sin. Our desire, our relationship with sin changes. It doesn't mean we will not sin anymore. But because we are now in Christ, who has already died for our sin, that sin is atoned for. The Spirit, the Spirit of God will prompt you to know that what you just did, what you just said, what you just thought is a sin. And so what do you do? First John 1, uh, 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 9, 8 to 10. If we confess our sin, it's faithful and just, and forgives us and cleanses us from all sin. So, because Christ has already died okay, for that so sin. Okay, so the second sin, yes. you can still be forgiven of it. Paul, even the sin you have not yet committed. You can be forgiven. You, yes, it's, for, it's, it's not can be forgiven. It's forgiven. The one you are yet, Christ. the one I'll do tomorrow. Yes. Forgiven. Yes. So I can go ahead. Because Christ, so, so I can go ahead. Paul, Paul, listen to uh -huh. me. Christ died once. Yes. He's not coming back to die again for the sin you're going to commit tomorrow. Is he? Okay, so this redemption. So do you, do you see what I'm I saying? I get it. This redemption you talk about mm -hmm. can be interpreted in two ways. Yes. You are redeemed so that, as the Bible says in a phrase, sin will not come nigh you. That could be one contextual conversation. No, wait a minute. Wait, I'm coming. So there's the Bible says somewhere that XXX sin will not come nigh you. So well. okay, let me take let me take that out. <laughs> so the context is this. Yeah. One, mm -hmm. are you redeemed so that you will not sin again? Yeah, or wait, wait, mm -hmm. or you are redeemed so that even when you sin, it doesn't matter. No. You're redeemed so that your relationship with sin changes. Well, you, yes, that, that's you, a, that's yeah, the yeah, sin yeah, doesn't yeah. matter anymore. No, just a minute. You no longer, within you, you have, you have no desire to sin. It doesn't mean you will not sin. Because but if you have no you desire just, to sin, you, you shouldn't sin. sin. Okay, let me, let me explain. It. When, when, you, when you place your faith in Christ, when you, when, you, when you personalize the gospel in your life, first, the penalty for your sin, which is spiritual separation from God, is removed. Second, the power of sin 
over your life begins to be diminished. You no longer desire to sin. And third, when Christ returns, the presence of sin will be permanently removed from your life. So, so we're still in, 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 a, in a fallen world. We're still in our bodies which are not resurrected bodies like the body of Christ. So we still experience sin. But because we are in Christ, those sins that we are yet even to commit are forgiven in Christ. Of course, as I said, the Spirit of God will prompt you when you do sin and you bring a sacrifice of confession. Okay, so assuming so, without, so, uh, without knowing that smoking mm -hmm. is a sin, assuming smoking is a sin, I, I don't have the habit of smoking. Mm -hmm. If next year I start smoking, then it is a sin, it's forgiven. If I know Christ. If, you, if, you, if, you, if the Spirit of God prompts you and says, Paul, what you're doing is a sin, and the Spirit of God lives in you. Yeah, it does, so, but so, it's a habit. So I'm you, sorry, it's a habit. You, I'm still you, doing you, it. You will know immediately. I, I, I will know, but I am not stopping. Apostle Paul said, what I want to do, I'm not able to do. What I don't want to do, that is what I do. That is Romans chapter 7. Yeah, yeah I don't know what it is, but how, Apostle how, Paul said that. He said that in Romans chapter 7. Okay. How does he end the chapter? And how does he begin? The one he says, shall I continue because of grace? Is it that one? No. He ends the chapter by saying, who will deliver me from this body of death? Uh -huh. And then he goes on into eight, chapter 8, verse 1, and says, mm -hmm. thanks be to God. Yes. For now, the law of the spirit of Christ, uh, 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 the law of, of the life in Christ, sets me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. In other words, sin is still present, still very much present. But I now have in me the life of Christ that overcomes that desire so is it correct to say that the whole process of the resurrection, and we are still in Easter, was not so much to, to reduce the committal of sin, but it was to checkmate the consequences of sin. It's not to reduce the committal of it, because Jesus Christ himself said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So all, everybody, zero, sin, bye-bye, forget it. Now, this redemption, is it to curtail the committal of sin, or is it to override sin. Paul, the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is not that the Christian is sinlessly perfect. No. The difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is that when the Christian sins, he feels remorse over that sin. He knows, oh, I should not have done that. I should not have. Because inside him now is the Spirit of God. That's the difference. That's the difference. The but he will do it the, again. The power of sin begins to be diminished in your life. You, 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 you no longer want to sin. Unlike before, when you had no control at all and you even enjoyed doing some of those things. You, you, your it's relationship... The, so you are saying that the resurrection affected the committal of sin. You will not be committing sin as you used to. Yes. But there will be some so, sins so left. In fact, in fact, if you find someone who says, Oh, I'm born again. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Blah, blah, blah. But their relationship with sin has not changed. They're, they're still committing the same sins. They're still carrying on as before. There's something wrong. But you said there was still sin. You said there was yes, still sin. So what but, sin but, will that but, be? But I'm telling you that that sin that they're committing, they have a new response to it, which was not there before. And you will find... Yeah, but is that response going to stop them from doing it? Paul, this is why when a person becomes born again, they have the Spirit of Christ. You, you, people change. I mean, have you not seen drunkards who no longer drink? Have you not seen yeah. wife beaters who are now transformed and, and all of this? What, all that what, happens. What happens? What, 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 what has oh, that's a transformation. That's yes, an obvious absolutely. transformation. But the drunkard that, may that, continue smoking. Does he has stopped alcohol, but he's still smoking. Does that mean that person has not changed? There's a transformation. The Spirit of God has come. I and mean, he begins a work. He begins a work. Paul refers to that in Romans chapter 8 as being transformed into the image of Christ. It begins somewhere. You have to allow that work to continue. You have to cooperate but, but, with but the you still, But you still still leave room for some sin to be committed. That's why I'm suggesting to sin. you that I think it is not about the committal. It's about the redemption. That sin doesn't matter to you anymore in your relationship with God. That sin is not going to be a blockade between you and God anymore after the resurrection. That you, can, you may have still sinned, but you can still go to what they call the throne of grace and mercy. So that's, that's what I just explained. So, so I'm saying that it's not about the committal. The redemption doesn't... It's not about whether you're going to commit the sin or not. Exactly. You that's yourself, that's after engaging right. with the word of God, will notice some transformation Absolutely. in you. And this but is you I may said, still be doing some sin. That's why I said the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian 
it's not that the Christian is sinlessly perfect. He's not. But his sins, not. his sins don't take but him away from Christ. He has a different relationship with sin where he no longer delights in going and committing sin as before. Hmm. Absolutely. Is By the way, these so, things are explained in more detail. You in in the book. Okay. Yeah, I will. I certainly will. Why <laughs> can people get it? Copy. Yeah, why can people get it? Uh, the, Ang- the Anglican bookshop on uh, High Street. Okay. Yeah. The book are you going to do like a seminar for pastors or something like that? We have been doing seminars for pastors. Yeah, yes. that, that will yes. work because yes. it looks yes. like they're the main target. But this sin conversation is interesting. Yeah. Ladies, are you getting some uh, <laughs> sin text messages? <laughs> I'm sure they Okay, are. Fatih, let's start with you. What are people saying? So, wherever yeah. you can respond to them before yeah. we wrap up. Uh, your camera is turned the other way. Okay, they will, okay, there'll be a camera for you. Yes, Fatih is on yeah. now. Yeah. All right, so this is coming from Gabriel, and she says, I love the way this man explains this. And then Gabriel Yeba says, this is the gospel. God willingly sacrificed himself for us. And then lastly, coming from Shadrach Mabla, he says, I don't believe in equality in churches, as that's what other pastors seems to put it. What do you have right? Um, Paul Enim is saying that he feels like sin is irrelevant in the life of a child of God. The child of God does not sin. The child of God cannot sin. That's what he thinks. And Gabriel Boa says, this is the gospel. God will only sacrifice. So Daniel Aiken says, Paul, I stand with Reverend on this issue of exegesis of the Bible. Theology teaches us to contextualize the Bible within time, purpose of the writings, and the group the specific scripture was written to. Today, people are just lifting verses and trying to sound more philosophical, and the worst part is they now refer to that as deep revelation. The simplicity of the gospel must be protected at all costs. God bless you, Reverend, and he adds a hashtag, stand up for the gospel. Now, Jonathan Nobite says, it's so sad Christians don't understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. Sin is a nature and not an act. If you move to America and obtained a citizenship, but your accent is still Ghanaian, are you American or not? Now, Shadrach in Bellum says, Mr. Paul, you're asking the right questions, actually. Even if it's not one person buying the private jet that you talked about, at least one, two, three, or a few members in the church may be buying the private jet, and he put that in quotation. And um, lastly, he said, Gabriel Yeboa, he says, Paul, contextually, you need to look at John chapter 15 to know if Jesus had said something prior to John 16 verse 1, because he said these things, and he put that in quotation. So the question is, which are these things being spoken of? Now back to you, Paul. Okay. Yeah, I have a text message here that's also yeah. quite interesting. It uh-huh. says that, uh, does the priest not understand that Jesus took our place so that we can be rich? He is mistakenly, he's mistaking poverty for humility. How can one in need of food preach to another poor person to receive Christ and be rich? The glory of God should be seen in our lives to attract others. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So the redemption is to save us from the consequences of sin. Difference between the non-believer and Christian is that we are saved through Christ and we are reconciled through Christ. Mm-hmm. Now this, this is a lady. She's, she's writing from America. She's disagreeing with you on the... She says Jesus Christ was made poor that we may be rich. So the <laughs> glory of God must be seen in our lives, including be seen in the, in the being the pastor in the church, the enterprise, the edifice of the church, looking glorious is very important. This is a question I have addressed. Oh, the, oh this, this particular the, yeah. question. Oh, you have. Very, oh, very I see. So I see. She, that's interesting. All she needs to do is get a, copy, to get a copy of the book. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's okay. fully addressed. In America, so maybe I have to yeah, get yeah. a copy no, of the book Amazon, for them. Amazon. Amazon.com. Amazon has it. Oh, yeah. Amazon. Has okay, so let's give that. Is that an ISBN number? Yeah. That we can... The, the, that, the, that's what you search on Amazon, yeah, isn't it? The, um, Amazon, um, Amazon.com. You, go, you just put in type, uh, stand for, stand for the gospel and it comes out. It's about $15 on Amazon. Okay, okay. Because here in Ghana, it's... Uh, it's Ask Mikael to look for it. Let's see whether he find it and then yeah. let's, let's publish it. Yeah, yeah I see. Yeah. <laughs> so th- this, is, this is a question that is fully addressed. I, 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 I would in, like to in, see. In, I'll read that. That's what I'll be reading yeah, tonight. Yeah. I'll, I'll read that. I'll read yeah. that in... Uh, yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Okay, it's 23 minutes past 11. So, what's the future of this narrative? Are you going to do another book? Are we? Yes, I'm actually. Those of us who read and believe that your philosophy is right, should we start writing on social media or something? Well, what are the churches supposed to do? Which churches are you really addressing? Is it 
charismatic or orthodox. All churches, all Christians need to receive the wake up call to return to the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether they're mainline churches or charismatic Pentecostal. And the gospel churches. has one message be saved. Absolutely. The one single message of the gospel. It didn't say become rich. You see, Jesus Christ said, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. What does that mean, Paul? Mm-hmm. You see, we need to look at these things. Look at the apostles of Jesus Christ. How did they live? In, but you in, ask in, in us look, to in Luke chapter you, you, verse one. Oh, oh, hold on. You ask us to look at the context of the Bible. Yes. But if you look at how the apostles lived then, mm-hmm. and you say we should live like that now, the context is completely different. Paul, give me the Bible. The apostles me, didn't have me, cars, me, did they? Read. There were no cars in the world. There was no. Uh, it's what's your favorite car? Is it a BMW? <laughs> Oh, it's a it's a, a Porsche Cayenne. A, a good car, a good car that would take me where I want. A to good go. car, so like a Toyota <laughs> Land Cruiser, something like I, that. I want to read. I want to read the verse. Yes, but I'm saying that we can't say the way the apostles lived. No, what it's I the mean way is, that our people what, should what live today. Is the, 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 okay, this is uh, Luke chapter eight. Mm-hmm. I'm reading from verse one. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, one of whom had, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, and Susa, and many others, who provided for him from their substance. Yes. In other words, the, these followers of Christ yes. contributed to, financially to his ministry. Yes. You but, see, but you don't want somebody to buy see, a private jet for a pastor. The same thing that Mary Magdalene, they Mary, provided and, uh-huh. for him, they provided for him from their substance. Provided yes. for him. Yes. It doesn't say they provided private jets for him. It doesn't say that. But what did they provide for him? They provided things they he pro- needed. They provide. Yeah, exactly. The yeah, but thing. but he so needed wait, transportation. But, 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 but Jesus Christ must have needed transportation. He was moving from Galilee to Jer- Jericho and all that. So they provided for him. Whether he needed clothing, he needed food, he needed shoes. Those are the cars and the private jets of today. No, Paul, let's be serious. The private jets of today <laughs> and the mansions of today, how many people in our societies have those things? How many people how, in how the Jesus people, society how many, have those how many people in the Jesus society had people providing for them? How many? In the Jesus society in Galilee, in mm-hmm. colonial Israel, mm-hmm. under the authority of Rome, mm-hmm. under the Roman Empire, mm-hmm. how many people? We're providing for an individual from their substance. It is just Jesus and a few. Same thing today. How many people are living in mansions? Not many. Mm-hmm. But the provision of the Lord can touch the heart of a church member. He can give a mansion to a pastor, a private jet to a pastor, a Mercedes Benz S320 to a pastor, I don't BMW that. to a pastor. I don't dispute that. In fact, in Galatians chapter 6, verse yeah. 6, Paul said, Those who share the word of God with you, you should also share your substance with them. Absolutely. That's Galatians chapter 6. And it's a substance. Six. And, and he's, he's telling them to support the ministers or the teachers of the word who have left everything to do that. So those who nurture us spiritually, those who devote all their time to study the scriptures. That's the whole to, idea. And to, and to help us to understand it. We have a responsibility to care for them. Not necessarily that they would build mansions and live in, and, and have private jets, but that they would have a normal, regular life, like us. You are legislating the care for them to be limited to normal. But I want to give a dangerous offering to my pastor. I don't want it. David said, I'll not give anything to God that doesn't cost me. If the Lord, That's what David said. Absolutely. Yeah, so if I'm giving something to God that will cost me, and I'm giving it out of my substance, and I'm a powerful CEO of a Nigerian bank, and my salary is $100 million a year, I will give the pastor $10 million, Absolutely. Something that will cost me. That's what David said. Absolutely. So the private jet is in order. Absolutely. But we cannot go about saying, therefore, every pastor must have a private jet. We are not saying they must have. <laughs> oh, but when oh, they have, oh, we shouldn't... That, oh, that when they rich, have, rich we shouldn't... People, rich people need to contribute. I understand uh, that. We are not know, saying that. But yeah. when the pastor has, we shouldn't call it a sin. Because he has a private jet, he's, um, he's not humble, he's not living the life of Jesus because he has a Mercedes Benz, because he has a Lexus 600, he's not living the life of Jesus. I think that's very unfair. No, that's correct. If, like you said, if church members who have, who have that kind of wealth believe the Spirit of God is calling them 
to give those things to their pastors. Let them obey the Spirit of God. Forget about church members. We talk about giving from your substance to the pastor. Mm-hmm. In the era of the Levites, they were doing it. They gave to mm-hmm. the Levites. In the Old Testament. So yes. we give tithes to the pastor. The pastor opens up the tithe box, which is for the pastor. And then he finds that the tithe box is reading $6 million. He didn't ask the people to give. Mm-hmm. He says, okay, we, this travel that we do, go to America, go to Canada to preach, it's getting complicated. Why don't you get a private jet? How much does it cost? $4 million. Get it. He gets a private jet. Is that a sin? No. Is the pastor we're, therefore we're not, not humble? We're not saying that people giving uh, abundantly to the pastor is a sin. We're not saying that. No, but I mean the pastor saying, having saying, a private jet. When, when pastors stand in the pulpit and they say, if you don't bring this, you're stealing from God and this and that. And they, they coerce their church members. Oh, that's members. wrong. That, that's, that's definitely wrong. We all know that. That's what we're talking But that's about. definitely wrong. That's but, what, but not that, the that's what situation of about. a pastor. Billy Graham was thought to be very humble. He was one of the wealthiest men in the world. No, no. no. Yes. Or, or what do you base that? On his assets. Billy Graham's assets. Please. He was one of the most influential people. He when he died, all the American presidents lined up. He Donald was. Trump was president of America. He's not known to be... A Christian church going person, but he said Billy Graham is his pastor, so yes. that's an influential person. Yes, Billy Graham yes. had more than one private jet. No, Paul, but he was Paul, a very the, humble the issue, man. The issue is not a question of being influential or not. Yeah, that's that's not the that's not the argument. Mm-hmm. For example, let me give you an example. No, you said the humility of Christ is not depicted by no, having private jets and mansions. The desire to have all this ostentatious wealth and to display it and say, "Look at how God has blessed me." That that. I have a problem with that. But he says, I will bless you and you will not have enough place to keep it. That's what the Bible said. He, was he said, I will bless you so that you don't even have enough place to keep it. Paul, if he is... gives you houses that you don't have enough place to keep it, that's the blessing of the Lord. Paul, this is where we go back to context. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that passage you just quoted mm-hmm. is in Malachi. Yes. Mm-hmm. Who was he talking to? They tell me. He was talking to Trist. To... He was talking to the children of Israel Mm -hmm. who had come from exile, Mm -hmm. who were feeling as though God had abandoned them because it was really difficult to get back to the life they had before exile. And so the the things that the law of Moses required of them in terms of offerings and things to support the priesthood, they were not doing it. And so God spoke to them through the, the priests and said, look, you people are not doing what I have legislated uh, in the law. You and I don't live under the law today. We live No, no, in... hold on. Say they were, not, they were not doing what was under the law, therefore what? He says, I will bless you so you don't have any... Metro TV. Insightful and inspiring moments. Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess Him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform by all means don't miss the good life devotion any day now welcome to today's episode with dr david bendon Wow, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am excited, as usual, to welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Good Life Devotion. The Good Life Devotion is a daily devotional teaching of the truth of God's word. So if you are a first time or joining us today, relax, let us take a cruise in these amazing truths that the Lord is bringing to us by the Holy Spirit. 
the teachings of the glad devotion are intentionally brought to us by God Almighty, by our Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost to make our life really amazing on this earth and outstanding among the things that he wants to do in your life through the glad devotion is to take you out of the quagmire of human experience of trouble, anxiety, unrest and all that and usher you into a stable state of blessedness as a son or daughter of God. Jesus said there is liberty, there is freedom, freedom of spirit, soul and body, but it is available to those who know the truth. Even if you have received Christ and you don't know the truth, you are an heir who is still a babe. And your experience in life will not be different from that of a slave. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. So these truths come to do that. Secondly, they are beyond ordinary Christian teachings. They are deeper truths than meat and the bones of biblical truths, which are meant to mature you. So sometimes the language is uncommon and it is intentional to shake you, to prick you, to inspire you so you can move from babyhood. It's like a, a mother who's trying to get a child to walk. If you allow the child to always sit down, the child is not going to walk. Sometimes you have to take the child up, push the child. That's what sometimes we do by our language on the black ocean. All intending out of love to push you to move a little further into that blissful place that's available for you in Christ as a mature son. What is the aim? That together as a body of Christ will come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And also, the teachings make us much more effective in the work of the ministry wherever we are and in whichever denominations we are. So that together we can be a stronger force that with love and passion will reach out to our world and bring them into this glorious life that is available in Christ. This has been an amazing way we've been dealing with the truth that you can change any circumstance, situation in your life. Don't accept that state of mediocrity that your financial situation cannot change just because you are in a certain country or just because of your educational level. It's a lie. Don't accept that state of diseased condition and say, this is my life forever. No. It doesn't matter which area of life. As long as the thing is undesirable and inconsistent with God's word for your life, the trouble is many don't even know what God's word says concerning their life. So they don't know what in their life is not according to the word or not. But thank God for truth that is coming to us. If you discover that your experiencing is not according to God's will for your life, you can change it. And that's what the Lord has been showing us how. 